is not a drill, this is not a drill. All warriors mount up. Proceed to half point gamma. Rendezvous with Mobile HQ for tactical and situational analysis. Welcome to the MHQ podcast. Hey everybody, this is Jose here. I have Bradley, uh, Randall, and Ronald. Today we're going to cover a couple topics, hopefully. One is the use of uh, special piling attributes or skills in the game, and another, how to build your Battletech community. Bradley, this is your call, your idea, so go ahead and go for it, man. Yeah, I mean, as most of you guys know, I mean, with the Alpha Strike book, it has a full lot of goodies that are inside of it, and some of the goodies that are in there are special pilot abilities, which is on page 92 of the Alpha Strike Commander's Edition book. Uh, most players don't know how to use these SPA skills correctly, um, you know, and I've come into, you know, contact with some people and I try to put them into our games and, you know, really Randall's campaign really got it to, to you, for us to use these in the games, and, you know, and Jose and Ron and Randall, you know, you guys have all played some games with them. Do you feel like it's just you're not going to go into detail about which SPA skills you use, but did you feel like it enhanced the game at all? Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the biggest things was that you, you uh, get to see your characters or your, your pilots start to improve. And yeah. the risk, when you put that guy out there with the SPA uh, and all of a sudden he's getting attacked, you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> <laughs> I might yeah. lose that one. Yeah, that's what I saw, bullseyes right on yeah. the pilot that had the skills. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, some, some of these, these uh, SPA skills are, are pretty crazy and wild and some of them just don't make no sense to have but what i'm gonna just do is cherry pick the ones that i feel like are the best ones to to have the most immediate and most predominant effect in the game uh we're gonna go ahead and dive right into the first one off the bat is gonna be bloodstalker uh this pilot skill spa is allows a unit to have bloodstalker and it allows them to take a minus one modifier to hit on a target as long as that target stays within line of sight and if the unit that is using Bloodstalker tries to shoot at another target that's not on the original, then he suffers a penalty of a plus two attack. Um, this is really good when you got a, a single unit that you wanted to say, okay, you're gonna kill that thing over there, you know, and that that right there, SPA skill, this makes it a perfect um, hunter type mentality, you know what I mean? Right, now you have to declare the uh, target at the beginning of the game. But that is correct. the target is not fixed throughout the entirety of the game. That is you get correct. to declare another target if you start your movement. Is right that right? Start movement. Yep. Out of line of sight of your your target, so you can then declare a different target. That, so that's actually really handy, and you can you can you can uh, manipulate that one. So if you move your guy, uh, or let's say you lose initiative and your opponent moves him out of line of sight uh, from your Bloodstalker, then you're free. You can then pick a new target next round, but for that round, you're out of line of sight. And mm -hmm. you don't have to have a, a good target, I should say. But you yeah, can just... do that intentionally too, because there's no requirement that you have to try to stay in line of sight. Um, so here's another exploit. You can... Um, you make your attack against your Bloodstalker target, uh, and then on your your initiative, you move that guy out of line of sight intentionally to cool off, for example. But you're cooling off next round anyway, so you don't really care if you're going to be uh, um, uh, get the plus two for shooting at anything else because you're not shooting at anything else. <laughs> that's correct. That's just being self-aware of what's going on in the game. You know that that's why I like Bloodstalker. Yeah. You know, it's it's definitely one of those. Like, how can you employ it into into it? It make the, really puts that SPA skill into greatness. You know, uh, my so next how, one is, how would you ahead. use that in uh, formation? So you've got say two lances or three lances uh, against three lances, and you've got Bloodstalker out there. How would you kind of use well, that to your advantage? That's a different uh, aspects. Uh, Bloodstalker as one of the SPA skills that you gain through lance abilities is a little bit different, and I, I think we need to cover that in another uh, podcast. No, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about the lance oh. abilities. I'm talking about okay. individual. Individually, so, um, I would use it to try to take down whatever is like either if you 
something like somebody has a fast unit and it's like going to have a TMM of three, you would say, okay, this blood stalker, this guy right here is going to be my blood stalker to take out your fastest guy, and that's all he's going to try to do is try to hit because that blood stalker. If you're also playing with, uh, you know alternate ammunition i mean you can just turn on and add the modifiers up to your guy and be and where that tmm of three or four could be a measly two because you're dealing with am, uh, ammo precision you know which takes another two uh one off for a, a unit that moves more than 10 inches you know so i mean it's it's really how you want to employ that that spa skill uh, i think the uh targeting your the fast guys is probably really good advice oh yeah um, <laughs> yeah, either that or the long range guy that if you know that there's a sniper in the background that you just you can do damage to him he can do damage to you but you just need that extra minus one so that you can hit him more often <laughs> oh yeah well, well we'll get into the sniper sniper's pretty good uh the next one is cluster hit uh cluster hit is anything that is lrm flak srm uh, ability it adds a plus one damage to a target if you hit with the LRM or those special attacks. I mean, if you got a missile boat and you got an SPA skill, you, you might as well go ahead and slap this in there. I mean, that's an extra point of damage that you give. I mean, uh, if you're not doing that with your missile boats, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, because... What's the note that it's staying still, though, correct? Uh, no, 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 no. The cluster hit is not that. No, no. You're as long as this unit with SPA does not move during this movement phase, it will add plus one damage. Oh yeah. Okay, that was that one. Yes, it's in there. But still, you add a plus one damage. Right. Yeah. So you get into woods or partial cover, whichever, and you, and you get your your automatic plus one TMM. That's uh, correct. Because that's, of the cover. So there you go. I mean, that's no, normally the most of the times your your this SPA skill also works for unit that is using indirect fire. You know, I mean him back there behind the hills keep him from being shot and let him throw lob an extra point of damage i mean it's just an easy thing now this one also works with another one uh which is called sandblaster that's another good one that goes fits with uh that. and sandblaster much like cluster hit this gunner is with the sandblaster spa is on the accuracy with weapons that normally dis disperse damage rather than focus it but when cluster hit does for concert hit fire the sandblaster is a specialist who works best with just the cluster weapon this unit delivers an extra we a weapon attack using only the following ac flak ia oh excuse me IATMs, LRMs, or SRM, and receive a minus one target and deliver an additional one point of damage. So you can have both those SPA skills on a missile boat and do two points of damage, and one of those missile attacks will come in with a minus, minus one as well. Yeah, so both of those are two point uh, SPAs. So mm -hmm. in order to have that, you would have to have, well, even a veteran could get that. So, in skill well, three, you could put both of those on a, a pilot. Well, here's the thing. I Maybe I should have started off at this, and so I apologize for being all over the page on this. But I think uh, most players don't know how to assign special pilots. If you look at page 92, it talks about assigning special pilot abilities. If a players are interested in running an Alpha Strike game with these special pilot abilities, but without any notable warriors found in published sources, they may choose to purchase these as special abilities as such from the list below based on the individual unit skill rating. So that's right there is what dictates. Uh, you just can't slap every good SPA skill on a skill 4 warrior. It just doesn't work. Uh, usually, the more SPA skills that a unit has, is the more chances it's going to have some pretty killer SPA skills. Um, in the examples it talks about, as those identified as green, very green, or whip behind the ears should receive no special SPA pilots. Middle grade units, such as regular skill units, which is skill 4, they receive one special pilot ability with a point value of two or less. Experience units related at veteran or elite, which is skill three and two, may receive up to two different SPA abilities, combat points values of four or less. Truly superior units with the skill rating of heroic or legendary, which is one and zero, 
uh, may receive up to three different SBA skills with a combined p value of six points or less. Uh, also, final enlist players are making the use of force build. The total number of warriors or crews that can receive special pilots should be limited to avoid over complications of the game at hand. Rule of thumb is here is that a player's force should try to avoid assigning SBAs for more than one unit out of every four in a field in a scenario. These pilots may be assigned together, spread out among the forces, various subgroups. However, the control of the player sees fit. So the ratio of one to four, I really believe is a good indication. Yeah, because you, you don't want to, number one, strategically, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So you don't no. want to have your one skill zero pilot with, you know, four SPAs out there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, that, that, not, that's not to mention also, you know, if you, you do that, you're, you, you put everything in one bag, egg, what happens when somebody cracks it? You just yep. lost points, highest PV unit, and all your special SPA skills that you would uh, accumulate it. Right, all your bonuses. Now, mm -hmm. going back to the two SPAs, the Sandblaster and the um, and the Cluster Hitter, mm -hmm. you've got uh, things that you can do in addition to that, just with normal standard ability. So if you narc a target, um, that's a you know plus one damage. Yep. So all, all now, alternate ammo works with it. I mean, it's yeah. really what you your tactics and strategies you pick out for those units so, you know like if you have armor piercing if you have uh lrm capability or srm capabilities and you put alternate ammos with those all those skills uh, you know stack like what randall and i played a few games when we yep. first so started then, playing go ahead yeah so then you add in other you know like you said special abilities but um say um uh semi-guided so you tag somebody you get a minus one to hit plus your minus one to hit from uh, sandblaster plus your plus one damage because of uh, cluster header plus your plus one damage because of uh, from your your narc yeah you can mm -hmm. really start adding things up and make your indirect fire guys brutal yeah I, wa I want to bring up a little point for anyone that uh, doesn't realize this but some of those special abilities are good across the board, no matter what kind of units you have. Others are directed toward, let's say, infantry, battle armor, proto armor, VTOLs. So take a good look before you select something for a unit to make sure you're selecting something that your unit can actually carry. Yeah, that's one thing that's nice is that the very first line tells you what what unit it can be applied to. So. Yep. I wish they, their table was a little bit better and included that in there, but yeah, table's good. It's a nice summary. <laughs> you gotta start start small for somewhere. All right, so now we're back into the SPA skills. We're looking next is combat intuition. This one is a lovely one. This is where somebody is just, uh, it's a, a gray area, but let's just go ahead and cover this. What this means is if you win the initiative, uh, then you, and if your margin is, I think, uh, the pilot or crew commander with this SBA has a black knack for accurately predicting enemy attack actions if he is focused hard enough on them. Though the in intuition is not quite powerful enough to pass along to the entire force there before the enemy has time to react, a warrior can make use of this insight and cut off a single opponent once in a while. If this has been wise when the initiative unit who has pilot has SPA can move resolve all of its attack during the movement phase apply all damage and effects immediately before any target that can act this ability can only be used once every three turns that's the key phrase once every three turns so if you have an SPA skill and you turn around and have combat intuition on turn one you win the initiative you don't have to use it it's not a force to do it right then and there but let's say you you lose the next one and you lose the next one, then the next turn, you win that initiative, then you take the initiative to go ahead and do this. Um, the clarity in the rules on this is when, you know, it's before any movement has occurred. So for the target unit being targeted by a unit with combat intuition, the rules state that the unit still receives its TMM that it was is. So you don't catch the opponent flat footed but all damage takes effect immediately. 
Except for there's one gray area in this, and this happened to me in a game with uh, Matt Lewis down in Fort Myers, where he hit one of my mechs with combat intuition, but he, he, he was able to turn around and, and generate heat from it. And I was like, but heat's done at the end of the of phase. Right, what do you guys yeah, heat, heat is definitely end phase. So even though it, it, it receives the heat before it gets a chance to move, it doesn't take effect until the end of the turn. Yep. There, there's definitely an order of operation thing there. Yep, that was the way we explained it. But if the unit gets taken out, that's it. It doesn't get to return fire. It doesn't get to shoot. It's eliminated. Right. Before it I, even I think, gets react. That is something that might uh, need clarification from uh, those on high, you know, from the Catalyst guys. Because um, if it's going to resolve, quote unquote, all of its activities, then you would presumably also take it, uh, into account heat. So it's almost like you have your own mini round up front. However, Maybe that's the case. That that's it, not. It does say all damage world. effects. Right, but damn it, heat is not damage. <clears throat> it's true. It's not, but it's a, it does impede, so it kind of is an effect. It's I think we, it's an we effect. We need to look that I'll, one up. I'll, I'll get you with that. <laughs> so yeah, that's something. Uh, maybe I should uh, drop a question on the forum for. Yeah. Is uh, I had a, an, another question that I dropped on them f this last week, and we can chat about that later if we want. But I don't think it's really relevant to this. So all right, let's keep going. Um, all right, so another one. Combat and I, I want to hit combat intuition though. Yep, um, go ahead. So what's not clear here? Um, well, I guess it is kind of clear. I'm, I'm trying to look at this from the standpoint of a rules lawyer. How could I be as written? And this ability can only be used once every three turns. One way you can read that is, let's say you've gone six turns into the combat, you can use it twice. But if you went seven turns, or, or sorry, nine turns, but you used it just one turn ago because the opportunity lasted somebody could try to twist that around and say well it's round nine i get to use it every three turns and i've only used it twice no. this should be my third i agree with no. you but yeah, it, as a stop. rules lawyer that might try to manipulate it i can see somebody arguing that that's how it's supposed to work i disagree yeah, it, three turns from when used right yep. and, and that's where the the wording of that last little line I think just needs a little bit of clarification. You know, three turns let's, 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 from let's the last this, use. Like this example, <laughs> okay? Let's say turn one, we start. Okay, I don't use combat intuition. Turn two, I win the initiative and I use it, and I lose the next two initiatives. Does that count as being uh, two turns down, or is it only account when you win the initiative and are able to utilize that? But if you used it prior, I mean, well, it yeah, doesn't seem it to does care. Yeah, it doesn't care uh, whether you win or lose. So let's say round one, you win initiative, round two, you win initiative, round three, you lose initiative. You can't use it round three. Round four, mm -hmm. you lose. You don't can't use it. Round five, you finally get to use it. Now you, you win initiative, you finally get to use it on round five. Right, now, then you get to use it again on round eight. Right, round eight if should be initiative. the first time that you, you are able to use it if you win. Yeah, in that case, then I guess, you know, what really should be done is just like uh, the guys from Wolfnet said, don't be a dick, you know, right. I mean, <laughs> just, just play fair. I mean, if it's if it's if it's that much of an issue at the table, my suggestion is the easiest thing. Roll on it. One uh, even. Yes. Odd. No. And if you roll a 1D6 and you get an even, yes, it can do that. And if it's an odd, then no, then you can't do it and abide by what the dice rolls. Until you get a chance to clarify. Yeah, I just wanted oh, yeah. to cover that because the way you read rules, you can shift interpretation depending on how it's worded. And I think that one's just one that just needs like one or two extra clarifying words just to make sure that they know that it's three turns from the last use, not every three rounds of combat. Yeah, and oh, if it's like... mm -hmm. go ahead. And if the heat takes effect immediately, too. Yeah, that's something that's, I, I'm going to drop on the forum, see if I can get a clarification on that. 
Hey, Randall, I, almost... I had another I had another question on it on the on the form about making clarification that you have to use it within three rounds, within three round or you know three turns. Okay, because the way it, I could interpret a totally different mindset and say that I have uh, I have to use it uh, on that third round. I think it's oh, just like, within like three. Like use it or lose it. Lose it or use it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I, I would not uh, interpret it that way. I don't way, see it that way now. Yeah, I, 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 I can clarify that. I think you wouldn't want to bank it though. You can't bank it. So say you wanted to. I'm going to use this later on. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, well, it's not and, bank and that's. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I think we still have enough on comment to intuition because we're kind of losing <laughs> our intuition. Yeah. <laughs> Next off on the boat is one that's called Float Like a Butterfly. This one's a pretty interesting one. That for every point spent on purchasing this special pilot ability unit may force the opponent to re-roll an attack. This is lovely. So if you guy can turn around and get two points of SPA skills, this right here allows you to get two of those dice rolls to be for Float Like a Butterfly. I mean if you got a favorite unit that's a, a a magnet for damage you can turn around and say oh i got that critical roll nope roll again there you go this is such a beautiful one for saving units you know if, if you got a commander or you got a, a enough spa skills that you are able to slap the two of these on there you got a guarantee maybe a, a chance of second life you know i know i've seen yeah, that that's particularly good for either your super fast flankers that are your glass cannons that are going to get blasted you know, <laughs> yep one or two points then and they're out or they're really good for your your um heavy guys up front that just happen to get you know parsed cover and you know woods so they've got a decent target number to hit them but your opponent got lucky and got the the nine or whatever they needed to hit them anyway True. you go nope roll it again <laughs> yeah, I mean, you 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 use Randall. You use float like a butterfly a lot. There's been a few times you're like, Pratt, you didn't get it. You got to roll that again, and I'm like, nope, didn't get yep. it. Denied your glory. <laughs> now, one thing I want to clarify is a lot of us are using uh, the um, multi-roll. So you roll two d6 per point of damage that you do instead of doing two d6 and all damage Ooh, like the standard rules. okay Let, let's cover so, that real quick right, in that situation about, yeah you have to re-roll all of the dice so if i'm rolling five dice and let's say i roll five hits um, that's a perfect opportunity to say nope re-roll yeah because at that correct. point chances are they're not going to get five hits again <laughs> <laughs> and bad feelings are had Yep. <laughs> I got robbed, man. I got robbed. Well, uh, you know, so the next one is a good one is a forward observer. This one is the only one that under standard rules, uh, an observer or a spotter can only spot one target. Uh, and he can only he can spot for multiple indirect attacks, but he cannot spot for more than one artillery attack. Forward observer changes that. Ford observer may observe a spotter for multiple artillery attacks against one target. If the forward observer makes its own attack, any indirect attack the spotter, IF, or indirect attack, do not take the target modifier for the spotting unit attacking. So you're able to ping away, say, call in fire from that big nasty mech back there, that Viking, and obliterate an opponent and add your little smiling damage in this process without taking a modifier for the spotter for firing. It's a beautiful one. Now that is a rule that I did not know. Really? So there's a difference between spotting for artillery versus spotting for indirect fire? Yeah. That is correct. What? Yeah. Nope. You cannot use the same spotter to spot for two different artillery attacks. That doesn't make any sense. Well, here, here's gonna twist your noodle, right? Let's say you laser tag it with, with tag. You got two units that shoot two arrows. Guess what happens? Well, tag hits both. Like, you have a tagged unit. They can be all redirected to the, the same target. Correct. But that breaks that little 
role as far as an, a standard artillery, like from your uh, long toms, snipers, and uh, thumpers. You know, they, they can't be, the same guy can't telephone every one of them and say, here, hit this coordinates. It has to be through a different spotter for standard artillery attacks. I'm going to have to dig it deeper into this. Oh, uh, dig it, dig it, dig it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't make sense. So indirect fire under normal circumstances with LRMs, you can you can spot one target oh, and indirect, multiple indirect no, no, fire no. units can hit that same target. That's correct. But it, the way this is worded, it's saying you can only have one spotter. Well, it suggests, it's not actually saying it but it suggests that there's only one spotter for one artillery piece. That is correct. Uh, I, I'm i gonna have to look into that. Look into it, brother. I Trust me on that. <laughs> we, we, we definitely are no, that, looking at it. That's what the role is showing. So I, I believe you, but it just doesn't make sense. It, it, it's one of those twist your noodles. That's why I said twist your noodle, bro. Yeah. Well, I've got a question for you. Now going back to flow like a butterfly with artillery, can you have me roll the artillery attack? Yes, you could. No, oh. no, you. Well, you can make them re-roll the tag. You cannot make them re-roll a indirect fire attack because it is not actually targeting the unit with float like a butterfly. It's targeting oh, it's the, the ground. True. Yeah, it's oh, ground. that's a good thing. Yeah. More than that. Yeah, yeah. Good so question. Good so, question with the one and four rule that they want you to follow on this, as far as assigning these things. I would think the best use of these would be on your fast hover vehicles, your um, Winterhawks, your Pegasus, uh, those guys there that can be your spotters. Oh, we, we've done that. Randall will, will tell you that right there. Uh, I had a Warrior VTOL that I put so much into him putting his skill down. And when he got the opportunity to have an SPA skill, he got the forward observer. And it, it was a multiplier on the, on the game. I mean, it, yep. it, that one little mosquito was going around zing, zing, zing until a freaking little SRM vehicle, uh, striker or skull vehicle, whatever it was, came up on. Yep, pack rat shot me from underneath. I was like, oh, shit, done. Got in the ass from behind. <laughs> Boom, you, one brick. point. Two <laughs> rounds of bricks throwing at it and you couldn't hit it. That was crazy. Oh, yeah, I, I shot my entire dropship shot at it. My my entire front line shot at it. I mean, that was probably like 13 die rolls at it. And I missed mm -hmm. every single one. And then the pack rat comes up. Bleep, one point. <laughs> and, and now so that, here goes another one that's a really good one is Headhunter uh, SPA skill. It's worth uh, two points. You can automatically identify enemy command units, including overall IG command company, subunit glances, commanders in a given battle. Gain a plus one initiative bonus, cumulative to a maximum of three for each opposing commanding unit killed or disrupted, not necessary by their own attack. If this opponent forces does not have any designated commander units, the highest PV unit is after skill modification in the formation is considered to be the commanding for that formation of this SPA. So this is a great way for you to gain initiative bonuses. Just because you have headhunter on one unit, if the opposing force loses a company commander or a lance commander, not by the actions of the headhunter, but by any of your sides, you can generate initiative. Now, it, so you know, the one it does thing not, I'm not seeing is it doesn't say you have to designate a commander per four units or something to like to to that effect. Right, but it says you use the high. If you don't have a designated one, you use the unit in that lance the highest PV value. Like if you have one at 45, another one at 35, and another one at 65, and one at 28, the 65 is going to be the officer. Yeah, but it doesn't spe specify the size of the force. So it could be your no. entire force, or it could be, you know, you could do a f informal agreement and say, okay, I need to know how many commanders you have. So each formation of four or six or five, whatever it is, well, um, let's look has at, to at, have at, a at this way. A uh, rule of thumb at a battalion level, you have nine commanders. You have a battalion commander, uh, but actually, you have 10. You have a battalion commander, you have a company commander, there should be three companies, and then you have nine, um, you'll have, what is it, uh, let's see, you take those, 
one, two, three, three off. You can have uh, six, six lances. So you got that many officers out there. Uh, for a company, you're going to be dealing with one company commander and two lance uh, lieutenants. So, I mean, you should, if you're going to be using this SPA uh, for Headhunter, it is okay to say, hey, in advance, hey, I'm using this SPA skill. Do you have commanders already? Oh, you do? You don't have to be revealed who they are. Uh, or can it automatically well, identify enemy automatically commanders? Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, here's where it doesn't say. It doesn't say that the headhunter has to have a visual line of sight. It just says it identifies. Right. That could be like uh, interpreting, you know, radio comms. Oh, you know. this guy's the outgoing transmitter of, of multiple comms. That's definitely the headhunter, or that's the commander. I'm of that glad unit. you brought that up, Randall, because I could see that being a problem at a game where somebody would like, well, how are you going to know this is my commander? Well, this guy would be on his comms. It's not hard to listen to enemy chatter once you, you hear it. Uh, being able to range when communications are going from one point, multiples are going to one point, and only sporadic Shoes are of orders are coming from a, a certain point. You got what I'm saying? Yeah, you can I mean, point. You're even right. Even when it's encrypted, so you can't even hear what's being said. If you have like a indicator that this guy's transmitting, and you can triangulate to that one individual on the on the battlefield, you can start seeing. Oh, like I mean, we're looking at our Discord right now. I'm chatting and I'm green. Everybody else is quiet. That would be your commander, most likely. Mm-hmm. So I have a question. Let's say I have an, an assault lance out there, and I have a, a battle master, a cyclops, an archer, and let's say a longbow. Okay, something a little bit, a little bit for everybody. Three of those mechs can be considered command mechs. Okay, the cyclops is considered a command mech. The battle master, uh, some of the archers are considered command mechs. The longbow would be the only one that was not a command mech, or normally considered a command mech. Uh, if they're all talking to each other, how do you determine the commander? If it's by PV, well, maybe the biggest PV is uh, the the best mech in the pilot, but he, mech pilot they have per se, but he might not be the commander of the unit. Well, then that's where you, at the beginning of the game, say, "Look, I'm using this SPA. I need you to designate on your record sheets who your commanders are." Right. That that it takes care of that issue right there off the bat. You don't have to play the PV game. You know, you, you, when you talk to your other player, like when me and Matt Matthew uh, Lewis played, he wanted to play with SPA skills. I was like, okay, hey, cool, cool, let's do this. Uh, do you have any questions? Do you want to know anything? Um, and we freely talked across the table exactly what kind of SPA skills we had. We didn't point who had what. We just said, hey, I got this and I got that and I got this. You know, I mean. There's nothing wrong with reaching out and telling another player, hey, I got this SPA skill. So please designate on your record sheets some officers, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and like Randall says, you know, don't worry about the, well, how does he figure it out? It just says that they do. And it's because, like Randall says, communications, radio chatter, you hear it all day long. Well, not only that, just think about it too. This guy might just have a knack for just being able to recognize how someone pilots or, you know, each. Yep. In the Baltic universe, Observation. Certain, cert, yeah, certain people were known by how what mech it was because of how the mech moved. You can yeah, watch I mean, like rumors control, you know. Yeah, hey, I mean, you know. just you would know Morgan's archer, you would know yes. Jamie Wolf's archer, not just because of yes. color scheme, just by how the mech moved. Uh, what's his name? Absolutely. Uh, Rita. Uh, starts with a Y. Help me out here. Yoshida. 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 Krita. They knew it was him in the Warhammer as soon as they fought against him. They knew it was him. Exactly. Or at least Patrick did. Some people have that knack to understand what mech is going to be the commander, or just they have intelligence, so they realize, okay, look, we know, just intuition. Right. And if you and imagine it, so it, mechs moving on the battlefield would probably take on some of the movement characteristics of their pilots. Uh, Personality, the helmets correct. and everything. Personality so, traits more than... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, like but the, the Black the, Widow... The, had like three different mechs, but they all had the same color scheme, and you knew when you were fighting that one. Right. So, like, I fight in the SCA. I have a very particular style of fighting. I move. I lean forward. I, I, you know, jump in on somebody. 
Uh, I'm very mobile. I, I am kind of twitchy. Now, another guy, he's very static. He stands up very straight. Another guy, he, he leans forward also, but he's very static. He doesn't move a lot. So you can start looking at the way they just move and go, I don't recognize his armor, but that guy fights like so-and-so. That guy fights like so-and-so. So you might, you might have a clue just to figure out who it is. That's true. You know, I mean, it's not to mention also uh, observing, you know, in real, real time, you would be able to recognize a command element because one, it's going to have bodyguards. Once that a unit that's commander is going to be standing still, he's not going to be really engaged too much. Uh, he's going to be in the backfield predominantly, and there's going to be some other mechs around him that are constantly staying within a certain perimeter of that one unit for bodyguard purposes. So that's one way to follow it. So All the right. other thing is, so we're talking campaign level at this point. So mm -hmm. in campaign, you're going to have to have a commander on the field if you're using any kind of like morale. Yes. So this is really important when you go, OK, I might be outnumbered. I might have this, the inferior force, but because I have headhunter, I know who your commanders are. And if I kill a commander, then I can force a morale check that might force you into withdrawal, even though you're winning the battle. Just that's because correct. of the, the, uh, the chaos of, of combat that's going on. So that's something, uh, just an extra layer for us who are playing campaigns. Oh yeah, that's definitely. Uh, next on the list is Hot Dog. Hot Dog is one of my favorites for any of you guys that like to run around with that, that Nova, uh, Nova Prime. Yeah, the Nova Prime and that overheats by four, yeah. Or <laughs> this is perfect. Uh, this mech warrior or fighter pilot knows how to how to ride the heat envelopment. Unit, this unit's act as if it was one level lower than on a heat scale, then it can sustain four points of heat for automatically shutting down, rather than the usual three. At four points of heat, the unit loses six inches of move, ground movement, subtract two from its target TML modifier to a minimum of zero, and suffer a plus three target modifier instead of shutting down. So you put this hot dog pilot in a mech, that over even overheats by one it's free overheat it's free damage this is such a beautiful spa and i love it and i don't think most of you guys ever use it and i don't know why well i don't usually use units that overheat oh number one same same <laughs> i've used it Oh, I, now you speak. <laughs> what? I was let all the other monkeys chime in first. Oh, here we go. I mean, but yeah, this is, this is a really good uh, SPA skill. Um, I think this SPA skill is a mimic of me. Any classic Battletech player should know how to manage his heat scale of his mech. You know, at long range, you're going to fire your two PPCs. When you get to range uh, nine, now you're in the medium range. Now you know you can fire one PPC and you can fire off three medium lasers and an SRM4, you know, and then next turn, don't fire the other PPC and cool yourself down. It takes heat management away from the game. This right here, Hot Dog, brings it back into play. So it is one of my favorite SPA skills. Now, the one thing to remind people, jumping is not affected by heat. So if you no. have that Nova Prime that can overheat by four, you pop a hot dog in there, you get him up to overheat three and then overheat him by four again. He's technically at overheat seven, right? But that yep. doesn't track past four, so it doesn't matter. By the rules, yep. he can still jump away with heat seven. And as long as he doesn't shoot that turn, he clears, yeah, you should clears be, all the heat. Clear it off. You should be, if you overheat a unit like that, if you use that Nova like that, your next thing is to jump it behind cover and let it cool off. And then wait to pounce, come out and pounce on somebody and hit them hard. Cause that's a brick wall. For a 50 ton mech, that hurts. <laughs> oh yeah, and especially if you're doing the multiple die rolls per per oh, uh, yeah. attack, you know, what is it? Uh, freaking eight dice is what it throws down. Yep. If that's it overheats eight. by four, and you're gonna hit with at least six. <laughs> yeah, even with a plus two or plus three on your your to hit modifier because of overheating before, mm -hmm. no big deal. 
Yeah. Um, now, that, that is something I wish they would clarify, that if you went to heat overheat five or more, that something happens. Yeah, because there's that, that's a nuclear meltdown at that point. I mean, it used to be in classic that you some, some guys would just make home would make mechs and just blast away, and they would overheat and then just shut down for one turn and then start fresh the next. And right. uh, then then classic brought in the rules of carrying the excess heat. That means if you generated 40 points of heat and you can only dissipate 20, yeah, you shut down, but you still got another. Um, and more yeah, you still got 20 digital heat, heat left you'll start you'll start the next turn starting back up at that next lower level of heat you would take 20 heat seeks from that 40 and you'd still be at 20 heat at that next turn when you when you restart you know i mean so th that's why i always think that with this you should jump away and hide and just clear it off that way there's no no issues you know but just be ready for that knife to come back jumping back at you because that hurts yeah, okay. you got to have it on a jumping unit, in my opinion. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's hurt. Otherwise, if you're a ground unit, you're, say you got an eight movement on something, and you're overheated by four, you can't move anyway. You're stuck <laughs> down with two inches of movement. Come on, is that really useful? Yeah. But nope. if you got a jump of eight, also, you can jump the full ver diff distance. So, little anecdote: I was mm -hmm. playing a game with against Ron. Um, and my Warhammer got up to a nine heat. I tracked it because I had overheated intentionally up to three. He overheated me by two more with his, uh, you know, whatever imps that he had. Um, and then I had like an engine hit <laughs> that Ooh. spiked me even higher. So it's like, oh my lord! It was just, it was nonstop heat. My, uh, I wish there were kind of rules in Alpha Strike built in that were like, ah, your pilot got boiled alive. Sorry. <laughs> you used to have that. Pilot would yeah, take uh, damage for it being overheat that much, and you could pass out. I mean, that's yep. one thing that, that Alpha Strike does not have is tracking damage to a pilot. So, right. I'm done with my rant on Hot Dog. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a great uh, SPA skill, right? And just for you know, I think with the new Itera for Commander's Edition and stuff like that, you can do artillery with one spotter. It does not say that anymore. Oh, good. They changed okay. the rule. Yeah, I was looking up indirect fire. You guys were talking. It says a unit with a spotter of indirect fire may attack. Unit spot for more than I have attacked in a turn, but cannot choose more than one target to spot for the same term. So basically, they got rid of that. And it says for indirect fire of artillery, it follows the paper, the rules on page 41. So that's what it says. So I think you can call in multiple artilleries with one spotter now. Good. There you go. That, that, that's at least consistent. I'm good with that. I think so. Like I said, that's why I looked up real fast, but I got to bolt, guys. Have a great night. Sorry I had to have to out. All right, good. Man. Have a good one. Take care, Ron. All right. All right. So next one on our bat is human TRO. This is a lovely one for me. Um, this one here. Uh, Everyone has a hobby, and this guy happens to be memorizing the specs for thousands of mechs. This is me, <laughs> by the way. Yes, it is. He won't let you is. figure it out. Concealing your data. Sex, I, I <laughs> can throw out some random damn mech, and Bradley's like, oh, it's got two uh, large lasers, two pulse laser this, it's got SRM this. I'm like, how do you remember this shit? So, so <laughs> should we change the name within our local group of this one to a Bradley? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I mean, but yeah, at the same time, his prime example is when you Randall busted out with a Warhammer with tag, and I lost my shit. I was there's like, there's no, no there's no Warhammers with tag. <laughs> I would know these kind of things. That's, that's exactly that, that's what came up. Wow, I just almost witnessed an accident in front of my house. Idiots. Wow, sorry. Cut that out. Okay, so back to the human TRO. Uh, so everyone has a hobby. This is like me. Don't let you forget it. Uh, this unit will automatically identify any non-hidden unit within 12 inches, revealing the unit's subject data card as if the human TR unit has LP a, a light probe special. You know what? LPO. We've been looking for a use for the light probe or in probes in general. I think this right here, if you have probe, you should automatically get this as a freebie by, by what it's saying in the rules here. It's because the unit has a probe unit, it's able to do what it's going to do. 
This ability applies even if the human TRO unit does not have an active probe of any kind but does not occur or confer the ability to reveal hidden units. In addition, the human TRO may look for weak spots in the target once per game. Use this ability must be declared before the roll to hit. If the attack hits, the attacker may roll once on the determined critical hit table in addition to any other rolls. So this is a one-shot wonder. Oh, I got my eyes on you. This is the mech that's been dealing so much damage to me. I'm going to turn around and use my one-time use of human TRO and get a possible crit. I have used this one time in a game and it caused a unit to be destroyed. Beautiful. Yeah, and that's a free crit. Yeah, you know, as long yep. as you hit. So I've got a five target number. There, There's my bingo. That's the one I'm going to try to use. <laughs> And of course, my luck, I roll like a three. Come on, that's what free usually day. happens for me. It's a free, free check. I mean, it's awesome. All right, and next one on our thing is jumping jack. Uh, jumping jack is while unit jump, if you have jumpers and you like to use jumping mechs and you're incurring that plus two modifier to your attack, this right here is gonna help you a little bit with that. While jumping mechs generally demonstrate all the grace once can expert from a brutal technology, brute technology force overpowering physics, some plants have turned these maneuvers into art form. So you got some Bruce Lee's out there. A pilot with this jumping S, uh, jumping jack SPA is so comfortable with the use of jumping movement that he unit receives an additional minus one target modifier for any weapons attacks during the turn where they've used jump movement. So that's a beautiful one. You are using a different version of the rules than I have. I got the Commander's so, Edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think you're, you're on a, a different uh, revision. So I've got this the be, version 6. What does it say in your book? So mine says, while jumping, mechs generally demonstrate the grace of once... Ah, once... Oh, yeah, that's a misprint. Uh, <laughs> while jumping, ja jumping mechs generally demonstrate the grace one... Ex can expect some pilots have turned the maneuvers into an art form. A pilot back SPA is so comfortable with the use of jumping movement that their movement uses plus one attacker modifier for jumping instead of plus two. Much more abbreviated. I definitely like this abbreviation. Okay. But yeah, they, uh, they said still once instead of still one. There. Okay, because I think I have the one that Bradley has, because mine says an additional minus one target modifier yeah. for a weapon attack. Okay, so, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yours says only once? Minus one target modifier, number modifier for Correct. any weapon attack it attempts. Yeah, so me yeah. and, Brad, me and um, Bradley are agreeing and... I don't know yeah, so hurts. mine, mine is from. Uh, I bought mine from Drive Through RPG. So if you, it, wherever you got it from, you should be able to get a uh, latest and greatest download. I got the book, book in my hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Your yours is out of print, dude. I got the so, one from 2019 and 21. It's out of print. That's out of print, man. Um, but still, <laughs> is still there. So your print says it's only used one time only. No, no, no. no. It, it says a pilot with a jumping jack a SPA is so comfortable with the use of jumping jumping movement that their unit uses a plus one attacker movement modifier oh. for jumping instead of plus two. What's so they, instead of doing the, you know, adding the plus two and then minus one, they just said it's a plus one plus for one. movement instead of plus okay. two. But yeah, I do that, that in my head sense, anyways. Actually. I do that automatically. Yeah. yeah. They just reworded how you do the math, but man, yeah. they had a lot more wording in yours. Yeah, I'm glad like I trim this one down. All right, next yeah, one. Yeah, word vomit in some of this is, is ridiculous. Exactly. I mean, so, but yeah, that's a good one for jumpers. I mean, it, it helps. Oh, you combine that jumping jack with your... Uh, um, a dog. Uh, with a hot dog. <laughs> and that's worth it. Yes, sir, you're going to splat a potato real quick. All right, our next one is Lucky. This is for those players that just can't hit a barn side of a door. You just can't hit it. Me. Um, go ahead Me. and read what you got. What, do you, what does your book say, Randall? Let's hear what it says for you. Maybe it's got uh, a little bit less. It's not really skill that's, that's placing this pilot shot, but nobody cares as long as they get the job done. For every point spent on purchasing the, the special ability, 
This unit may reroll one failed attack roll or one failed control roll per scenario. The second roll result stands even if it fails or is worse than the first. The special pilot ability may not be used to change the outcome of any other roll or other roll types, such as critical hits, hull breach checks, initiative, or morale. Bingo. That's a good thing that they, my book says the same exact word for word. Everything okay, you just so they said. They must not have had a. He just cleaned up jumping jack. There's a few they probably cleaned up, but that right yeah. there, it, it allows you to, uh, to when you when you're playing multiple dice. If you're going to use a lucky, you have to pick all of them up. Even if one's got a box car and you want Correct. all seven to hit, and you hit just with one and got a box car, and you not like nope, you have to pick them all up and re-roll them again. A good SBA I skill. will not and pick up the box car. <laughs> I will not let it front roll because of the box car. No, I don't know. I, it, let's say I, I I just played a, a match and it was like nine dice being thrown at me at medium range. It was ridiculous. Freaking Mars uh, tank. <laughs> um, if I only hit with one and it's a critical hit and I need like an eight or a nine to hit, I'm probably going to reroll the whole batch because I'm betting. I'm going to get more damage overall. If I can strip your damage, um, I think that's... If I can do three points of damage, I think that's more valuable than one critical hit, especially with a nine or a five where it's a no crit. Oh. Yeah, I always roll those. Those are my favorite rolls, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we definitely... Now, here we go with some really good ones. Uh, we're going to cover two right quick here. This one's Marksman. And also, we're going to cover with this one Sharpshooter, because they're almost practically the same. Uh, with Marksman, it may not be a Sharpshooter yet, but if the gunner if the gunner with this SPA skill is at place his shots for maximum effect, as long as the unit stands still in the movement phase, any successful weapon attack executed against a target with this weapon range will deliver only half damage, rounded down to a minimum of one, but this attack may score if a margin of success of three or more. Marksman also gets additional check on a critical check against its target. This critical check is made even if the target still has armor. Um, that one for Marksman is you you do half damage. So if you do four points of damage at long range, you're only going to do two points of damage. You still get the chance to roll, even if there's armor. I dropped the Night Star because of this SPA skill, but you got to do it by a margin of three or better. So if you need to roll a, a, to hit an eight, you need to roll a, th a 11 in order to get the chance for a critical. Uh, the same thing goes along for Sharpshooter, except for Sharpshooter is very similar, but... The difference with that one is it's full on. If you do four points of damage and you got sharpshooter SPA skill, which is four points and the uh, marksman is two, I mean, it's just supposed to be a little bit more lethal. You do full damage at long range or medium range and you still, with the margin of three or better, you get the chance on the critical hit. So those are two different types of SPA skills that do the exact same thing. Just one allows you to do more damage for a higher cost on an SPA skill. Both of them are crucial. I love those SPA skills. It almost seems like those should be upgrades of each other. Yes. So if you buy Marksman first, then you can spend two more points to get Sharpshooter. I think, honestly, like, oh. maybe you should do that for our campaign. Uh... I hate changing uh, core rules. You know, that's something I might yep. suggest to the uh, the Catalyst team via the forums, but I don't know. That's I, it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying with the campaign. I am trying not to change core rules. Uh, we can have our own personal house rules for our stuff. That's fine. But um, as far as changing the rules, I, I'm really hesitant because I want to be able to just say, Go to Alpha Strike, this page, there you go, follow that. <laughs> now, here's, here's some things about some of these SPA skills. We're going to cover the best one of them all. Range Master. Randall, I was go wondering ahead. when you were going to get to that yeah, one. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and read <laughs> yours. I want to see what yours says, if you don't mind. Oh, you want me to read the table, too? No, God, you don't have to read messed. the table. You just got to read the little gerbage. Just see if they, if they yeah. changed it. This warrior's ability to strike their enemies has certain comfort zone. Choose one range bracket other than short or horizon brackets. 
The gunner for this unit specializes in attacks at that range bracket, applying a minus two target number modifier for attacks in the specialized bracket, but a plus two modifier for any attack made in the short range bracket. Mm -hmm. And then he has the table, which simplifies things a bit. So that you can make your guy to be a badass, if like majority of clan mechs should be range masters long. Automatically, it should be like that. Inner spear should be medium range. You know, that's for the most part, yeah. Yeah, that's where they do the most damage. Now, this SPA skill can be made it with sniper. Oof. Just, oh yeah, that, that here, Jose already. Oh, you look Oof. up the, on the table. If you have the sniper, I know. I've, I've used it. I've used it, Bradley. I know what you mean. <laughs> the sniper SPA. Actually, yeah, that one's tough because you have to have a skill two pilot or better. Yep. Because sniper is skill three, yep. uh, or, or three points, and range master is two points. So you have to be able to do at least the the six point guys. And that's uh, let me scroll up real quick. That's going to be the um, for two six and... points. No, actually, it's skill one or skill zero. Yep. So it's harder. It's yeah. like. Ooh, that's a that's gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. If you combine that together on a skill one or skill zero, it's gonna hurt already just because of the skills. Now here well, goes let's put it this way: that I used it incorrectly because um, the way I was using it was uh, if my mech was a sniper mech, I thought I could put it in there. Oh, nope. but I guess I can't. I guess it's. Uh, I guess I do need. To, I see the SPA skill now above that. So yeah, yeah. yeah you need the uh, sniper skill first. That's right. Range, uh, range master can go well with even with sharpshooter. You look at that, right? Like if you just take the standard uh, and you put your guy to be a long range master, and you have sharpshooter, if that's where you put your six points in, that means you're now, uh, let's say your skill one, you didn't move because you got to stand still for sharpshooter. This is zero. Let's say the effective range is you're a long range fighter. That's a plus two, and the target has a TMM of, say, three. That means you need a five or better to hit him. That's brutal, and if you roll an eight, nine, 10, 11, or 12, you're getting crit checks on that unit. That hurts. Uh, sniper, yeah, free crits. Yep. Sniper SPA skill with this. Uh, this gunner's SPA has reduced their unit's range modifiers at medium, long, and extreme. Uh, medium is a plus one, long is a plus two, and extreme is a plus three, but does not affect short or horizon modifiers. So, you can look on the thing when it has sniper. If you have sniper ability and you choose long range, then that means your skill at zero is uh, short range is zero, medium is a plus one, and long is a plus two. So, uh, that's that's a killer. You put that one to be your terminator of your if you got somebody that that does a lot of damage oh um, yeah uh let's see uh okay here we go now there's some in here that are pretty good that i think that if players have melee mechs they should look into reading them i'm not going to cover them too much because i i don't use them too much so i don't really have a perspective on them but if any one of you guys do on melee master melee special and also swordman those three SPA skills, if you have a physical mech like a Hatchet Man, Axe Man, uh, uh, Odash, or even um, uh, uh, Night Stars, you should put these on there because some of these enhance the damage capabilities of units with physical attacks. Uh, another one that I like to use is Tactical Genius. If you're playing with a commander, a battalion commander, company commander, Give him tactical genius. Uh, I think that this is where player thinks about trying to win the initiative a majority of the time. An officer with this special SPA has a superior grasp of the battlefield solution and can tap into combat senses to maintain control even under the most chaotic firefights. This unit is the command unit for this side and controlling player must reroll a second time on initiative. The first roll was beaten by his opponent. Initiative reroll rolls result stands even if it's worse. Initiative rerolls may only be reattempted once every two turns. Also, in addition, if battlefield intelligence rules are in play. This unit is treated as if it has an MHQ4 special ability. So, this is a one that can generate uh, 
additional uh, initiative. If you're that player that's like, I hate losing the initiative, I, I'm stickler that I gotta make my opponent move first. Uh, that's the way you want it, then take this tactical genius and you're almost gonna have a sure way to, to you roll and then not to mention also you're gonna pick up a plus one initiative if you're using the uh, battlefield intelligence. That's another thing. Now Bradley, I have a question for you on this one. Oh. Seems to me like this is the guy that will be in your mobile headquarters unit, not on the field or in a, in a battle mech. No. Or maybe even on board the dropship. No. This is your commander. They have to be on the battlefield. Oh, it has to be on, has the, to battle be on the battlefield. It is your commander. Yep. It is your... Now, you could turn around and say, my commander is the mobile HQ unit. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. That's who yep. your commander is of the, on the battlefield, and so be it. But, you know, a, a mobile HQ unit is going to be prime target, so I wouldn't put my commander in that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to have to earn that cookie. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to think of, like, what would you combine that with? And I think uh, um, Float Like a Butterfly would be an excellent one to combine with that. Absolutely, because you got that only costs you three points. And if you take that and you got Float with a Butterfly, oh, I'm going to kill your commander. No, you're not. Reroll. <laughs> you know? Yeah, Reroll that. Yep. <laughs> you, you know, you're going to keep rerolling it until you miss. <laughs> I mean, pretty much some of these other SPAs, um, the infantry ones are nice. Uh, they're not too terrible, but I feel like some of these other ones were kind of like lost because I don't understand why in Alpha Strike, if you're able to move extra inches on from your unit, you should be able to pick up an extra TMM for doing that. And oh, unfortunately, you can't do that. Speed Demon is like one that would be great for having that ability. Uh, you also would have, uh, shoot, where's the other one? Uh, Oh wow! Well, I mean, it, it's just it, unfortunately Alpha Strike does doesn't cover that rule of it. You know, if you move X amount of inches, you should get the benefits of moving faster than a speeding train. Right? Yeah. So, like Speed Demon. I mean, come on, two inches? That that's nothing. It should be something proportional to your actual movement. Yes. Like being able to sprint and attack at the same time. I agree that's, with that. That's, that's a speed demon. demon. That's a speed demon. Yeah. Yes, um, we all agree on, on that sentiment. You would put your fastest homeboy that can speed demon and go, I mean, now you would see speed demon put on, on a fire moth on a table. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? You all the way in your backfield and I'm hitting you for five points of damage to your rear. That. Can you move that far? Yes. I can. I yes. Speed demon. <laughs> oh, you're yep. trying to shoot me? Float like a butterfly. Nice. Yeah. No. I mean, even if it's a plus two modifier or something, that 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 would be a thing. So, speaking of that, I mm -hmm. think we need to have uh, a future episode on house rules because I know we yeah. all have some. Yeah. We all have ideas on what we should be doing. I've got a ton of lists. Heck, I've got a document that I've got full of like house rules of things that I would use. Yeah, we but, pretty uh, much put them all in into the campaign, man. I mean, the campaign was a great place for for that as options. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, that, that should be a future discussion. We'll, we'll cover that okay. in a future episode. So what else you got for this, uh, this one, Bradley? All right. Um, the rest of them are pretty much like a player should, um, should look at them and see how they best want to use them. I mean, they're not ones yeah. that I've used too much. I mean, unless you're playing with Terrain Masters, uh, Windwalker. I mean, there's even some SPA skills in here for VTOLs. Uh, let's like take a quick yeah. uh, ground hugger. Uh, the VTOL, this one right here, is another special ability for ace aviators with a burning hatred for those damn ground pounders. It says damned in the book. Ground yeah. cutter SPAs. <laughs> yes. Offended even. <laughs> <laughs> Flex a pilot whose fast reflexes and severe sense of timing enables him to deliver more damage in a single pass than miss others. Resolving air to ground combat rules. Pilot with this SPA can execute either a double strafe or a double strike attack in a single ground attack pass. Double the strafing allowed. Go ahead. That 
So you can do strafing with VTOLs. However, yep. that sounds like it's more a aimed at the aerospace. Yeah, it says so type. It says for VTOL, combat support, fighters, aerospace and conventional, and small craft. Right, but VTOLs do not do strike attacks. They do standard attacks. Yep. Strike attack is a special attack that is only done by aerospace units. Strafing, they can both stra strafe. So that's consistent. Yeah, well, maybe that's something you right there need to turn on for the um, uh, clarification on Groundhugger. Because a VTOL had the capability with this SPA skill to learn how to do that. That's the thing. Right. Yeah, I, I think I'll put that out on the yeah. board and see what they say. Because if, if you think so about Bradley, it... So, Bradley, let's, uh, let's go ahead and um, move on to our other little topic we wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, and then next time we get together, let's do special command abilities. Oh yeah, page one hundred two, because I think that's where the SPA skills, uh, in co in, con um, in combination with these, really really make a very uh, a better game altogether. Yeah. Okay, well let, let's before we dive into that, let, let's let me just cover this with the SPA skills. Okay. Uh, for players learning to play with this, uh, I would tell, don't know how to use them, play the one in four rule. Uh, that's a yeah. great way. You're not playing with too many units to have it and all like that. Uh, or if if you don't know how to pick them, then you go by the Lance abilities on a unit and they, they get auto assigned a few. That's the best way. I would highly advise it that players do not play with Lance and SPA skills combined as it will definitely give you more units to have SPA skills. Out there, so try not to cultivate the two together. Play yeah. one or the other. Okay, that actually sounds like a good, good uh, point there. I mean, if a player yeah. wants to play with both, and uh, you know what, I'll sit there and play that game with them and, and knock them sideways to heck. <laughs> well, I, I haven't beaten you in a game yet, so it really doesn't matter with as far as I'm concerned. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. So next on the topic, gentlemen. Well, I think we wanted to talk about how to grow your community um, based on the conversation you've had with those people in uh, Fort Lauderdale or uh, where were yeah, you? Sarasota. 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 No, 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 gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me clear that out. That was down in Fort Myers. Okay. Fort Myers. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sarasota uh, County though. Um, real quick on a backstory. Um, I'm, I'm a real estate agent. I've helped most of you guys out. I mean, in fact, all three of you guys out on buying yeah. a home. Um, I came in an opportunity with my, my company was asked, Hey, can you come down to Fort Myers and stay the night and do an open house on a property? I need to have it, you know, represented. I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to be 200 miles away from home. I was like, well, I'm not going to be stuck in a house and not doing anything. Let me just see what the local scene was all about. So I reached out to a couple guys on Facebook and one of them pointed me to cool comics and games down in Fort Myers. Uh, I went to their Facebook page. I communicated with them and they put me in touch with uh, Jeff Hogan and Matt Lewis uh, who are down there and they were running an event uh, for uh, board games. And I this is like I contacted Matt and I was like, hey, man, I'm in the area, but unfortunately, I don't get done uh, doing this open house until after five o'clock. So um, I linked up with him and got to meet some cool guys down there and uh, see what the scene was down there in Fort Myers. We actually had a pretty good, cool game to play down there. And, you know, and, and Matt and Jeff, they're they're looking to expand uh the Alpha Strike game down there in Fort Myers area. And they both kind of hinted at we, we'd like to get a little north versus south type thing going on. And I'm kind of itching for it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not I'm like, mm, bring your best of Fort Myers versus the best of, of Central Battletech page group. And let's go. The guys down there knew about us because uh, the moment that I started talking that, you know, my name is Brad. Uh, I'm the one of the guys from Central Battletech page. Um, the moment I mentioned Randall's name with the campaign, they were like, oh, wow, that that guy. And I'm like, yeah, that's was part yeah, of that us. helping that building. <laughs> they're like, oh, wow. And then it blew their minds when they found out that um, I was one of the podcasters for our, our mobile HQ. And they were like, 
So that's you. And it was like, I got starstruck. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good to see our podcast is out there reaching to the other app analysis because like what we yeah. are doing and it's what I told them is we are trying to help make the game play easy. We're not here to talk about products. We're not here to talk mm-hmm. about catalytic like game labs and what they're doing and whatnot. Um, do got to say a quick uh, shout out to Jonathan Colton, who's right now at LVO, right now having yep. fun, blasting away. Uh, I saw that he was uh, round two, second place, and I saw round three, he got pushed down a little bit. So one bad get round won't determine it, so I'm waiting to see what he does for the rest of the game. But, uh, he is a very solid player, man. I have not had a harder game other than fighting you, Bradley. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 uh, I complimented him a little while ago when I was talking to him because, uh, uh, you know, he went to the Orlando, uh, in the, the Orlando circuit twice now, and he's gone from third place to second place in the Wolfnet 350 tournament rules. Mm-hmm. And I said, I expect you to come in first when you go to LVO. Yeah, just put a little pressure on him there. But I'll yeah. tell you what, when it comes to 350 rule, his ghost bears are a beast of a force. Yeah, he, he's know? definitely one of the top-notch players. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. he's really yeah. good. So, really, Bradley, really good. you had to travel down to Fort Myers. Yep. Where is your home base? What What's your game store that you go to? Uh, the game store that's down there, uh, that, like I said, it was two of them. No, uh, no, no, your home base. Oh, mine is mine is Critical Hits Games over here in St. Pete. That's in St. Pete. All right. So, Jose, where's your home base? Uh, what's your uh, usual haunt? Usual haunt is Armada, but I'll also go over to Critical Hits. And uh, occasionally, if they, the event's something I want to participate in, I'll go to Warforge in Spring Hill. Or Spring... Whatever. Uh... Anyway, Separate. south of south, Fargo. south of uh, not where no Randall is. Well, more Emilio is Warforge. Yeah, it's over in Largo. Uh, is that, is that Warforge? Warforge? Yeah. No, yes. no, no, Warforge. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Warforge. Seminole. Is over. Yeah, it's yeah. In Seminole. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We got so many names in us, guys. <laughs> yeah. So Armada is <laughs> in Tampa, North yeah. Tampa. Temple Terrace. Then, yeah. Yeah. South so of Yusef. I'm up in Spring Hill. We're just starting out a group in uh, at Nat One Games. Um, we're trying to get things going kind of on a semi-regular, you know, once a month on Sundays. Uh, just trying to get classic going as well. There's a bunch of people who've bought the, uh, the you know, the basic box sets. Um, so this is a good segue into how do we build the communities? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Bradley, what are you, what, it, I know you and I have both worked on organizing things in the past, but now that I've moved to you know, an hour north of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't game so what's much. What's your uh, What's your plan? What, what have you done to build the the community in the past, and what do you got planned for the future? Oh, that's that's kind a, of the, that's, that's an easy uh, easy thing. First and foremost is when you go into move. Let's say you moved into a new neck of the woods, a uh, new city and whatnot, and you find where the gaming stores are. The first thing you do is go in there, talk to the owners. Uh, talk to them say hey i play this game do you have an active group uh if they say we don't have a group but well, can i start is there you know and then start scouring on facebook and saying hey I, i'm willing to come here and play uh does anybody want to come play and just start with small games and and do some little localized tournaments you know the wolf net 350 games are pretty fun to draw a crowd uh it's pretty well known um, get the game store owner to say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pl- hold an event. And then when you're there, make sure you go in and introduce yourself to every single player. Uh, I did that when we were when we had at Critical Heat, at Critical Hits, I went around and said hey, to everybody, hey, thanks for coming to play. Thanks for coming from uh, Fort Myers area. Thanks for coming from the Ocala area. Thank you for coming from the Kissimmee area. Thank you for coming from the Sarasota area. You know. Yeah, we had guys from Miami and Jacksonville and oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah so, we wow. sure did. Yeah, we did. I mean, so like that's the key thing is is when you've got people to come in from other places, just say, hey, welcome to coming here. Uh, I, I here's a web. The biggest thing that we did and could help you is. Okay, well, we play at this store. We have a, I'm creating a Facebook uh, messenger group 
for this game store that we can turn around and mention and set up games to play in this store. Um, and then when, when you play, find out from the other players what they want to play. Uh, start off small. Yeah, are, they classic, are they classic or are they yep. alpha strike? Are yep. they experienced? Are they new? Mm -hmm. Do they want to play the 350 format? Do they want to play uh, Randall's campaign? Do yep. they want to stick to just mechs or do they want to bring in um, combat, uh, you know, full combat arms? Hey, you know, yeah. definitely start the games off slow and, and low um, because I personally, build them up. guys, I personally think that the best method is introduce them to the 350 format that way they have a conscious idea that you can play the game with more than just mechs you can bring infantry you can bring battle armor infantry tanks uh yeah you know just basic combat arms and the, yeah. the, the, the rule systems are actually the simplest yeah they've got really good um scenarios i like the scenarios yeah but their army build rules are a bit complicated and a little bit like i just built a 350 tournament uh force this last weekend just as a you know behind the scenes and i screwed up i put in nine vehicles instead of eight oops oops you know, so now i gotta rebuild my force because it's yeah. not technically legal for a tournament yeah so as long as you're you're fast and loose with that and you go hey you know we're trying to get you familiar with it i completely agree um, yep. I think their format is great as far as play. Um, I'm a little hesitant to, to throw the the army restrictions at them quite at that point. Yeah, at that point, you don't do that. Um, just try to make it a, a fun point. And uh, during the game, ask the players, like, hey, is there any rules you're not understanding? Is there anything I can do to make it clarifying? Uh, and then even after the game is done, uh, you know, sit back and get feedback from them. Find out what they liked about the game. Find out what make them do. And find out from them. Hey, do you have other players that you play with that you could probably come here and play? Because you, you might just come across somebody that else that moved into the neck of the woods. Don't chase them away. Yeah. So the other thing we did while, um, you know, Bradley, it was kind of like uh, three players, Bradley, myself and Tony, who has moved away to Maryland. But uh, <laughs> we love you, but we hate you for moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it was basically the three of us for quite some time. Uh, so we worked with the sc store at Critical Hits, um, and Acker was, you know, very enthusiastic about getting BattleTech in there and getting it active. So we we did a couple like little bragging rights tournaments. Our first couple tournaments were only like four guys, six guys, you know. And then, you know, as we kept playing, we started getting bigger. And then at some point, I don't even know how it was. It you that got a hold of. Um, the uh, uh, Wolf Dragoons guys to do the big tournament. Or was uh, yeah. that Acker? It was me. I think. I okay. think that was. Uh, that was. Yeah, that was Bradley. Bradley or Randall? I mean, Randall. Was me. It was Ron. Okay. Ron got it started, and. Okay. So that that tournament came in, and we had we we had what a uh, full 32. house, thirty two players. People. 32 yeah. players it was like every single house or every single table was occupied yeah so let's let's wrap it up real quick yep. but just uh future events that we'd like to get done and yeah. i think that's the next thing i, I definitely so, want to say real quick guys um i'm looking to talk to acker about us having a a 350 tournament at critical hits probably in february towards the end or maybe in the middle of march so be okay. ready I'll, I'll give you guys Understood. updates on that shortly. Let us know the era. We'll do. Yeah, yeah. that, that works. That works. I'm game. Up here in uh, Spring Hill, I'm trying to do um, like beginner matches because there's a lot of guys that used to play and are still trying to get back into it. There's a lot of new players who've bought, bought new box sets, but they don't know the rules yet. So right now, my, my focus is on um, giving them the opportunity to play and learn the rules in a you know friendly environment. So. Same for same for myself, uh, guys. I'm also doing the same thing over at Armada. Uh, we've got a bunch of guys that we've gotten into playing Alpha Strike that were only playing Classic before, and then those guys are now helping new guys that are coming back to the hobby. Uh, we guys we got guys coming in from Wesley Chapel, um, Brandon. 
they're just coming from all over the place just to go to that store oh, that's uh, good. and play yeah I, I think it is the only problem we're having there is warhammer has just had a big explosion and they're taking up a large number of tables but uh it's okay we, we get, do get support from that store there which uh i think they have the largest selection of battle tech uh force packs that i've seen in any of the stores i've been in lately has been uh, that, that in temple terrace uh, oh, and good. mike is always happy to have us there to play games and i think the biggest way i've seen for us to get people to look at our games in the middle of a game is if you have your mechs painted up if you have your um yeah nice looking terrain nice looking terrain even the paper cutout terrain looks good on the table you know yeah. what i mean yeah i got I'll, I'll occasionally take up the 350 uh format uh, terrain that i picked up from our tournament that we were able to purchase and i take that to the store every now and then and that gets some views when we get there and then the store itself is selling some hex terrain uh, which is being used as well in the store uh, by people that are buying it, bringing it into the store to use it. And it's, it's that presentation where painted units, painted uh, terrain, uh, the trees, the water terrain, all that kind of stuff. People see that and they yeah, even, don't... Even the number of units on the field. So like oh, yeah. one, of the, one of the things that was always criticized with about Battletech was it's like oh well it's only like two to four units per side well yeah. now we're playing alpha strike and we're doing you know 12 and higher a much yes. higher so it's like <laughs> wow okay you you can play that yeah and it only takes yeah. us a few hours yeah you know? yeah the the one game that really got a lot of people looking at uh at armada was the one that me and bradley played over there with my karita forces versus his uh yeah, big city uh, fight. Army. No, no, Those that tanks. was that was at critical hits. Yeah, your tank force, your armor, your your combined arms force. Yeah, your combined arm force, David combined arm force. Uh, against one thing, by, yeah, one of the things I do that uh, uh, kind of grabs people's attention is I'll I use uh, micro machines and <laughs> I have Star Wars micro machines. So I'll, I'll throw down like a, instead of a VTOL. Uh, I'll sub it with a, uh, um, you know, Luke Skywalker on the, on the hover bike, <laughs> and people are like, "What are you playing, Max against Star Wars? What the hell is this?" Why um, not? I mean, yeah. yeah I no, 3D it's... printed some, uh, some, uh, some stormtroopers. So I've got like white infantry with black weapons out there, and they're like, "Are those stormtroopers?" Why, yes, they are. <laughs> 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 it catches people's attention. They don't yeah. expect it. And they're like, they look over and they see something they recognize. Uh, one time I used, uh, instead of a, a king crab, I used at at walkers. Oh, I man. Two king crabs that were subbed as at at walkers. Even though I had the, at the king crabs I could have used, I wanted those on the table so that people would look at and go, what the heck are you guys it's playing? Doing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's all about getting the eyes on the table. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, the, the people that I've seen at Armada, they come back to play Alpha Strike because they'll see another table where the guys are playing classic on the hex map and the guys are looking over the map so they can tell what terrain they're on. Um, yep. And it, it just, it looks like a boring game there. Mm. You know, I understand yeah, yeah. how that game goes. I understand the mechanics of it. I can play it and I'll have fun playing it. But for someone looking at it, the Alpha Strike game looks more dynamic than the classic game. I'm not right. for you guys that are classic fans out there. I am not dishing classic. There's room enough for both formats of the game. I will play both formats of the game. Right. It's, it's just, just the visual appeal. Appeal. That, yeah. Yeah. As, as a bystander, I look at a piece of paper with hexes on it versus, you know, an actual hill with a mech that's hiding on top of the hill. It just looks better, in my opinion. Yeah. And the game, and like we've been talking about, the game is much faster. Yeah. I think that was like a 48 mech versus 48 combined arm units at that store, Bradley. And I think we were under four hours yep. of gameplay. And that was a lot. We were moving lances at a time, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. the best way yeah, to play big movement. games. We'll cover that in yeah. another time. That's for sure on how to play big battles. Because uh, I think that uh, w once it's out there, like how to do these things, people get intimidated and you just got to keep yourself organized. Right right yeah and that's why that's why i, I tell um 
I've got the people over there now playing games, and I've got uh, Kenneth Fly also showing people the games over there, and a few others. Um, so it's just a matter of getting a, a large group together now. Uh, we have a bunch of school teachers that uh, play over there, and during the summertime they can play every every week. But uh, uh, right now, school school starts and they get busy fast. Mm -hmm. So. But we do have people there, and we finally got our own uh, Catalyst rep at uh, at Armada with uh, Connor oh, good doing deal. that. And he ran the same game that we were at in um, for the New Earth campaign. He ran it, but in a classic format, Bear. And I, well, I was there playing another game, and the guys had a blast. So yeah. it's it's something. I mean, I, I th the game is definitely on a resurgent level, and I'm just glad that I got back in. You know, that I got into the game, back into the game. I should say. Right. All right, guys. Hey, guys um, yeah, it's about time we wrap things up. This yeah, a good discussion. Oh, yeah, definitely, guys. It's great talking to you guys tonight. I hope that uh, anybody listening to this podcast got some things taken uh, into. Con knowledge at least on the gameplay of these oh, SBA oh can you hear me oh, now yeah, I can hear you nice and yeah. clear all right well let's just go ahead and sign off then gentlemen <laughs> good night guys later right, guys from the MHQ family we'll see you next time see ya take care guys bye